welcome back in this chapter we will look at preprocessor directors so before we look at what is a preprocessor director first understand what is a preprocessor so preprocessor is a step during the compilation process right when we are compiling a program this is the first step that happens so the source file my.c or my.cpp gets opened and it gets parsed by the c preprocessor right so the preprocessor actually does a text substitution so it scans the entire source file and substitutes certain words with certain words right that's pretty much what a preprocessor does after that the actual compilation happens and then the linking and the library files get included and finally you get the executable file right so now what is a preprocessor directive now let's look at what is a preprocessor directive right preprocessor directive starts with hash right this is the pound symbol it starts with that it must be the first non blank character of the file a preprocessor directive should begin in the first column right so that's how it should be done so it has four major types hash include directive we have already used this right hash include stdio.h or stdlib.h so we have already used this hash include directive second is the hash define we have partially used it right we will see more about it in this chapter third is the conditional directive and fourth is the miscellaneous directive we'll see all four of these in this chapter there are two operators one is hash and one is hash hash we will look at these two right as well in this chapter so we have already seen this hash include so we'll not talk more about it user defined stdio.h or user defined header files also can be included all you'll have to do is double quotes and give your own header file right within double quotes instead of angle brackets so hash define max 1000 what happens is during the pre process stage of compilation it scans the entire file wherever max is there it will change it to 1000 right that's all it does so this is hash defined it's also called as macro substitution let's look at that as to there is another example which will show you how this works so let's look at the second macro substitution here hash define multiply x comma y x star y right so three and four if it is passed you will see the output as 12 right so here you see the output as 12. there is one thing to be a little careful about let's see if we have 3 plus 3 comma 4 plus 4 our expectation is 6 into 8 is 48 so 48 would be the answer right so let's see what happens here it's giving 19 so what is really happening here so how the compiler has changed this is during the pre-processing step it changed this multiply 3 plus 3 into 4 plus 4 it does a literal translation right so it does this here uh, 4 plus 4 right so what is this 3 plus during the priority it says 3 into 4 is 12 and then there is a 4 right so 12 plus 3 is 15 15 plus 4 is 19 so that's how it works so this is a pitfall right so you can also correct it with something like this if you do this it will fix the problem let's run this program now so now why does it work because the compilation when it does the substitution changes it to this right so this becomes 6 plus so it does this within the bracket first so 6 into 8 is 48 so macro substitutions be extra careful you have to use you have to take care of these so there are some predefined macros in c uh, underscore underscore file underscore underscore line underscore underscore date underscore underscore time underscore underscore stdc right so why how are these useful right these help in actually helping in debugging a lot right so let's look at this as to how it looks so let's look at this program ns7 printf percentages percentage d underscore underscore file underscore underscore line n what to equal to zero so if it's an even number it comes here if it's an odd number it comes here right so let's look at the output for this program so let's look at this program hash include sta.h int n n is equal to seven printf percentages percentage d underscore underscore file underscore underscore line right what it does is it prints the file in which it was done and the line number from where the output came let's run this program 
you will see main.c7, right? So there's a seventh line in the compilation. This is really, really helpful for debugging, right? So when you have to find out or in a trace file, if you have to see where did it come from, in which line are we in, right? So where did this get printed? So this is really useful to do it. So let's look at the macro substitution hash hash operator, right? So hash define concat i comma j is i hash hash j. So what it does is wherever concat of i j is done, it will convert it to i j. So this will actually become equivalent to printf percentage d i j, right? So in the entire program, it will scan and wherever i comma j are there, it will convert it to i j. Right, so this is the biggest advantage of this hash hash operator. So really when you will use it, right, so that's going to be a bigger question. We will have to look at that later. As of now, just remember that this is an option available in C. Next, let's look at the hash pragma directive, right? So hash pragma directive is a method which is used to pass to the compiler where the startup function should be, right? So before we execute main, if at all we want to do something, right, startup. And before we do exit, we want to do some things, right? We use the hash pragma directive. So let's look at this program for pre-processor directives, right? The hash pragma. So hash pragma startup function one would make function one get called before main function is called. Hash pragma exit function two will make function two get called with the program. So let's run this program. So here you are seeing only the main. You don't see the, uh, the startup and exit. So what's really happening here? This hash pragma works in other compilers. It does not work in Python to exit function. So hash pragma here, if you look at it, the output says now we are in main function. It does not call these two functions, right? So what has really happened here? Uh, it does not work on a GCC compiler. It works for other compilers. On GCC, there is a different way to do it. So in a GCC compiler, you don't have a hash pragma. Instead, you have something called as a constructor and destructor. So whenever you do this, uh, first you will see that before calling main, it calls the constructor function, which is function one, and then it gets into main. And before terminating the program, it calls function two, right? So these are some things that you can use. These are very rarely used, but it's good to be aware of it. So now we look at conditional pre-processing. So conditional pre-processing is something like, um, so only certain sections of the code would be compiled. You can ignore or you can kind of make sure that certain sections of the code are not compiled, right? So hash if, if it is defined as Unix 32, it will say in sizes to hash LF, if it is defined as Unix 64, it is in sizes four. So in all these statements, hash defined finally in size will be only one of these, right? So if it is defined as Unix 32, if this is defined, then it will compile only this statement. If it is defined as this, it will compile as this, right? So this is called conditional compilation, right? And sometimes, right, it will say that you can also say that hash error in certain cases, for example, wax machines, it will not work. You can say that and you can come out of the program. So this is called conditional compilation. So that's quickly the summary of preprocessor directives. So we saw the hash include, hash define. We saw the macro substitution in this. We used the hash and hash hash operators. We did the conditional directives. We saw hash pragma, hash error, all these statements. That's the quick summary of preprocessor directive.